Christian von Koenigsegg, founder and CEO of the high-performance automaker Koenigsegg, revealed a next-generation engine technology that could displace electric vehicles entirely in a tightly controlled invite-only event hidden from the public view and attended by only top automotive elites and industry giants. He introduced the revolutionary engine design, a monster in itself with power and torque like you can't believe, in a very friendly way. An innovation that isn't just a step forward, but the start of a whole new automotive era inside the camless revolution. Christian von Koenigsegg didn't just stroll onto the event at the old airbase runway in Engelholm. He owned the moment. Under the soft glare of studio lights, he brought out a short, wide-bodied carbon fiber test mule tapped a button, and suddenly silence gave way to something entirely new. Gone was the mechanical chatter of cams and chain. In its place, a clean, sharp hiss. That sound came from dozens of tiny air-driven pistons firing with mind-bending speed and precision. This was Koenigsegg's lightweight engine running on a radical system called Freeval. There's no camshaft, no timing belt, just ultra-fast pneumatic actuators all controlled by artificial intelligence, adjusting every valve hundreds of times per second. That means more power from each drop of fuel and way less waste. This wasn't some wild last minute invention. Koenigsegg and his engineers have been refining free valve for nearly a decade. Back in 2016, they shocked everyone by fitting it into a little 1.6L Koros hatchback. The results were wild 47% more power 45% more torque and 15% less fuel use. All of that just by ditching the camshaft. That success proved free valve wasn't just a cute gimmick. It could work even beyond commuter cars. So Koenigsegg's team kept going upgrading the actuators, improving the AI and perfecting the oil air hydraulics until the system was tough enough to survive inside a world-class hypercar. The first real world result, a beast of a motor nicknamed the tiny friendly giant it's a two-wall, three-cylinder twin turbo that delivers 600 horsepower. Yes, 600. From an engine that weighs just 154 pounds. Stick it inside the four-seat Gemra prototype, and this Mega GT goes from 0 to 60 mph in under two seconds. Keep your foot down, and it'll hit 248 miles per hour. The trick is constant valve control. At cruising speeds, the engine sips fuel gently, but the second the turbos kick in, the valves snap open fully for maximum power. This lets the engine act calm or crazy, depending on what your right foot is doing. But Koenigsegg didn't stop there. Pair that tiny friendly giant with his new in-house electric motor, the Dark Matter, and things go nuclear. The motor alone weighs just 86 pounds, but makes 800 horsepower and 922 pounds effective torque. Put the two systems together and you get a hybrid pushing out one 700 horsepower and a jaw-dropping eight 100 pound-feet of torque at the wheels. All of that power gets routed through Koenigsegg's custom nine-speed multi-clutch gearbox, which lets the car instantly jump from one gear to another. It's called light speed for a reason. Still, brute force was never the only goal. Koenigsegg and his team became obsessed with efficiency. Free valve's dyno tests already show it climbing toward the magic number, 50% thermal efficiency. That's nearly double what old school muscle cars managed. And it's possible because this engine doesn't waste heat. Every cylinder breathes exactly what it needs. No more, no less. When the car is idling, the engine just closes all the valves and waits. It barely uses fuel at all until you press the pedal again and it's not picky about what you feed it. This engine can run on regular gas, pure methanol, Brazilian ethanol, even synthetic e-fuels made from captured carbon and clean electricity. Fill it up with Sweden's Ininti 5 biodiesel or straight up e-methanol, and you get almost net zero carbon emissions without needing to dig more lithium or strain the power grid. But torque is cheap in the world of supercars. So in early June 2025, Koenigsegg opened up the old Air Force hangar at their headquarters in Engelholm and invited a few test drivers and journalists to see the thing run. They watched a stripped down Gemera prototype still wearing sensors but no camouflage, rocket down the runway on a tank filled with 95% ethanol. It hit 60 mph in just 1.9 seconds again and again, 
and braked well before the markers at the end. The test logs showed every detail, exact valve events, fuel trim adjustments, exhaust temps. The onboard AI was making real-time tweaks, shaving off drops of fuel while keeping the engine cool enough to protect the turbos. Many still crave the feeling of a real engine. Slashgear's year-long series on drivers who refused to give up manual gearboxes broke traffic records. People kept coming back to the same reasons – sound, vibration, and a sense of control. They said that's what's missing from most electric cars. Koenigsegg's light-speed engine speaks to that crowd. It delivers the sound and feel of combustion without the climate guilt, cutting carbon emissions close to zero when it runs on renewable methanol so drivers still get the thrill while regulators still get to sign off. The economics are catching up too. Bloomberg Neff's most cautious projections still show that entry-level battery SUVs could cost the same as gas-powered ones by 2028. But Koenigsegg's internal supplier estimates put a light hybrid powertrain within 2-0 of that price point, as long as synthetic fuel is taxed at the same rate as regular gasoline. And in places where ethanol is already blended into the fuel supply, that price match could happen even sooner because the infrastructure is already there. Jobs are just as important in this equation. A recent study by the International Council on Clean Transportation found that battery cell factories need about 144 workers per gigawatt hour, but most of those jobs are concentrated in just a few big facilities. On the other hand, a camless retrofit strategy like Koenigsegg's spreads the work across existing engine plants, assembly lines and dealerships. That keeps more people employed in more places. It's a model that unions in the US Midwest and lawmakers in Germany are now paying close attention to. They worry that if battery mega factories become the only game in town, jobs and value could drain out of their home region. Looking ahead, the data points toward a future of coexistence rather than one technology beating all the others. Bloomberg Neff now expects global sales of electric passenger cars to pass 39 million per year by 2030 with battery vehicles eventually dominating the market. But the International Energy Agency's Net Zero Roadmap shows the fastest emissions cuts come when small, high-use city cars go electric, while heavier-duty vehicles in rural areas rely on ultra-efficient engines burning low-carbon fuels. That kind of mix system lets each technology do what it does best, instead of trying to force one solution on everything. Right now, the pieces are coming together. Governments are writing rules that allow any clean technology to compete. Automakers are investing in synthetic fuel plants just in case batteries don't go the distance. Drivers are still drawn to the emotional power of real engines, and the price gap between options is closing fast. Christian von Koenigsegg has said it before. There's no need to pick just one path. Innovation isn't a zero-sum game. Whether you end up with a whisper-quiet motor or a fierce camless growl, the real win is having choices. Because the best drivetrain for you might not be the best for someone else. And for the first time in a long while, that choice is finally back in your hand. Thanks for watching. See you in our next video.